Welcome back guys. Today we're going to take a look at how we can integrate this BMS that I bought a while ago and did a couple of videos of into my 14S battery pack and make it possible to actually add several battery packs to the same BMS and make it very very easy and dynamic to move around. So we have all the parts laid out here. We are today going to mount this smart BMS with Bluetooth functionality and frankly you can actually mount whatever BMS you want in this kind of way. Just be sure of that the balancing current is big enough for your system. I'm going to mount this to this 14S pack that I have here and this is 11P and it's low capacity so my plan is to actually add them several of them in parallel. I were trying to get hold of and get reach of 14S or 15 plug JST connectors but they were rare so instead I actually got these balance leads um, for 7S that can parallel several so I'm going to use two of those to make a 14S pack and then I'm going to make hey, have leads like this one between the packs for actually hooking them up the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to hook up more than one of those packs to this balancing board in theory 3, 4 or even 5 and perhaps I will test the uh, edge and add several of them and even add more than I should so what we have here is the original balance plug so basically what I need to do is get this wire hooked up to this lead here that goes from the balance board and from this lead then we can connect up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 different packs so we will start with this one and get this one hooked up here and for making this simple I will actually attach one of the ends here so we can plug it in and make it very very versatile what I now start is to remove the old wires from the big plug because they are the same as the ones that I have in the smaller ones that I bought and they can be moved over it's rather tricky but the point is that you need to press down the lever and when you got them out you need to get that one up again as you saw me doing with the screwdriver and then it's just a matter of pushing it in until it clicks. It's a rather tedious job but when it's done then you're done. Here you can see that I am preparing the one to go in again. And then I push it in. And uh, using the screwdriver to get it in the past, last piece. And here we have the new wire. Zip ties to hold everything together as it should making it very tidy and then of course I add a couple of snots of hot glue to the end uh, we don't want those to easily come out again so some hot glue will make that better and then it's just a matter of soldering on the wires to the battery pack and what I'm soldering on is uh, JSTXH um, 7S uh, extension cords and those will then be hooked up to the lead that I made earlier and I'm basically just soldering it onto the bus bar when soldering always use the correct size of soldering iron with the correct mass and if you need something that is big check out the description down below and you will be able to get a proper weller uh, soldering iron and now it's time for the other side And it's the same thing there, soldering along. I'm doing half on each side and half on the other side and that's just because 
it goes opposite direction plus minus plus minus quick cross check to make sure it's working the first 7s plug should be showing the voltages so let's see about that here you can see the total voltage of 24.52 and here is each cell 4.1, 4, 404, 41, 409, 4175 and that looks really really good tightening it up with uh, straps of course it's not the nicest install I have done but uh, I don't care much here the packs I'm using here is just my 1 kilowatt packs that I build with spare low capacity cells so they are more of a show purpose for you guys uh, adding some hot glue of course just to make sure that it's tied it up a little bit and what I do now is actually go back with the soldering iron just shortening the leads that are way too long And now it's time to hook this up into the BMS. Um, there are two contacts and they are the same. And just to make sure that I don't do an average Joe, as you saw in my other video, I hook up a red stripe to one of the sides just to mark which goes where. And here I connect up 7S to each. And that in conjunction makes the 14S. Hooking up the B minus side as well, that's important because if you don't do that, uh, you will get a very, very strange behavior on measuring the first and the second cell. Uh, to hook up everything up uh, on the battery packs is XT60 contact. Uh, so I basically went back and created a parallel contact board of some kind. Uh, with seven XT60 contacts, uh, so I basically can hook up six of those packs to the same BMS and same output. The XT60 is good for up to 60 amps, so that's more than enough for those smaller packs. The pack itself is not made to withstand more than 10, 11, 15 amp or something like that. When soldering, just make sure that you have a good fume extractor because those fumes are nasty. And once again, a proper soldering iron for the job. It's quite a lot of mass here, so it's not that easy with a, bit, a smaller one. But this big one makes it so easy to work with. And I'm soldering this wire directly to the BMS, there's no use of having extra contacts. And I'm not pulling it through either, I'm just soldering it to the pad. And the positive side, same there. A lot of solar is used for this but this roll I'm using here is very very thin and that's the reason why it takes a long time so guys I now have this ready here this is the BMS board where I added up a bunch of XT60 contacts and on this side I have a spark free XT90 contact the contact itself 60 amp rated 90 amp rated the cable is a 10 AWG and it's more than enough rated for this BMS this BMS here, if I'm not mistaken, is 30 amp, so it's not actually ha made to handle many amps, but for testing this should be fine. Um, the batteries itself are of course uh, protected with a fuse as well, and they can now be hooked into here. Meanwhile, you hook into the balancing board. So I will be showing you guys a little bit on when I hook this up and how this works. I still need to tidy up the cables a little bit on top here. I have not decided on how to do it. So we now have the battery hooked up to the PCB or the BMS itself. And here we have the serial adapter to USB that we will be hooking up and we have the USB cable. 
So on my computer I have downloaded and I'm running the GBD tools software. So let's hook this up. We start with this plug in here. And then we take the USB cable and hook it up. And we hook it up to the computer. When this is hooked up to the computer you need to find a COM port that this is using. I'm not going to go into this today. And you choose the COM port. In my case it's COM7 and I start it. By starting it, it will now refresh and get data. You can see it in the bottom window here where it says read data and read success. That means it's frequently getting data. You can also see it that LEDs here is actually blinking both the read and the write. So that means we got all the data. When you start to use this you need to do the calibration first. So you go into the calibration tab. You measure each one of the cells here and input the value in millivolt. When you input the value in millivolt and you press calibration it will set that new value. So for instance if we take the multimeter here and we go in and measure the first cell and we can see that this one is 4.10 volt and we need to go back into the software and we press it as 4 100 volt and we press calibration and you will see that this field here now is calibrated and showing closer to 4.1 volt this is something you need to do with everything and you also need to do it with the thermistors for the temperature you can now go back to pack info and we will see that the shunt is actually working as well and to do this I built this small contraption here that exists of persists of 3 10 ohm resistors 100 watt that's 30 ohm and they should produce somewhere around 1.7 1.8 uh, amp depending a little bit about the overall voltage and by doing that we will be able to measure the shunt but before we start with that we're going to cross check the total voltage of this pack and it's just a matter of hooking this voltmeter up again and we can see we have 57.3 and our software is measuring 57.11 and that's because I have not calibrated all the cells in the pack if we take this resistor shunt here that we have here so basically those 3 10 ohms should be somewhere around 1.9 amps and this depends a little bit because we have voltage drops across the cables and everything so let's plug this in and we keep an eye on the software and we can see that we are currently pulling 1.7 amp, 1.75 amp um, and the voltage quickly goes down it's worth men mentioning that this is roughly around 100 watts that goes through those three so that's quite a lot and they rather fast get hot we're up to 1.8 and we can see that this pack is doing its job and the PCB is doing its job as well so that's really really nice to see if you want to set the current you can do that as well because if you have known values here oh, they are hot now um, you should measure them with an, uh, a current meter as well and you can go into the software and actually set the different currents one when you are discharging and one when you are charging and even with calibrate the curve so I suggest you do that as well so for instance if I know that this will produce uh, 1.9 amp I need to set that in milliamps when I am discharging to make sure that I get the proper values it's not a big issue right now because I'm not running it live yet I think that's it for this series where you actually see me integrate this PCB into my 14S packs. Uh, I'm about to build at least three more of those packs because I have many small low capacity cells left. And this is ideal, it's one kilowatt hours per pack. And currently I have ports to actually handle six kilowatt hours per this BMS. The balancing function is not good enough and the current for it is not good enough. But we'll see about that so guys I want to thank you for watching and hopefully you thought this was interesting and I'll see you next time bye